Y'all gotta quit falling for the okie doke. Y'all gotta quit falling for the banana and the tailpipe. Squid Games ain't just some TV series or Netflix series, whatever, that everybody want to watch from Korea. Matter of fact, since when has anything from Korea been a hit in America other than that dang zombie movie? But that ain't a hit with everybody. That's just the creepy crowd, you know, folks like us. So Squid Games, you know, some junk that they just didn't, you know, then pushed and told everybody that, you know, this is the movie you need to see. So since they want to play these games and act like this just a fantasy and something that they ain't did in real life, I'm going to have to go ahead and tell y'all the truth about them and expose these folks, man. Now, first of all, don't think that everything that's viral is viral because everybody just loving it. This stuff be going viral because big companies like, like, you know, Netflix, they come and give big companies like YouTube big money to make sure everybody see they movie. Now, I'm going to tell you about the real Squid Games. They did this in the projects. Now, for y'all that don't know, the projects were these gigantic buildings that they built back in the 50s, 40s, 60s, whatever. Back around now, and they built them in major cities for people that didn't make a lot of money to stay in. For example, city like Chicago, Detroit, New York, or whatever. You know, now, you know, places like Atlanta, Phoenix, you know, they might have had, like, projects but it just wasn't as big and as on bigger scale as you know those major major cities so cities like Chicago had projects like Cabrini Green which was thousands of apartments at a real cheap price so people from the hood could afford to stay now one much resources for them so people resorted to crime to be able to pay their bills and they even get ahead in life. Now, sometime and late at night, this van would come through, and a van would be full of these people dressed like doctors. And they would tell the people who was on drugs, because at night, that's the only people you see outside, drug users and drug dealers. Now, why would the drug dealers get in the van with these people? They're not going to do it, because they're making their money and stuff, man. So they ain't going to entertain Nobody pulling up to them say, hey, come on through. We got we got some doctors. We got some. We'll clean you up and blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, we'll give you a little check so you can go buy more drugs with. So if you're a dope fiend and something like that happen, you're going to get your butt in that van. Some people say it was 20 people. Some say it was five people. Some say it was 50 people, but I'm telling you, it was over 100. They cleaned them up, gave them a little medicine, made them feel better. They gave them some nice clothes, all of them in the same, you know, type of uniform little thing. Then they opened up this big door to this big open area and told them that money was on the other side. And told them whoever got to the money first, they could get all they wanted. And they told them all they had to do was play a game of red light, green light. So when they said green light, everybody took off running. Like you expect them to. Like they anybody would have done. Like me and you would have did. And when they said red light, how many of them drug fiends, them dope fiends, heroin addicts, crack addicts, whatever you want to call them, clucks, jays, whatever you want to call them, how many of them do you think stopped when they heard red light? When they had a chance to get their hands on more money than they ever seen before? more money than they could ever make. 